Pentagon officials are under fire and watchdog groups are up in arms after Oscar Mayer is awarded a multi-million dollar contract for a new military-grade hot dog. Will Congress take action? And later, the scientific streaming wars heat up after chemists announce an upgraded periodic table featuring dozens of new elements, all for just $4 a month. Is the subscription worth it? From The Onion and Onion Public Radio, this is The Topical. I'm Leslie Price. My bones are made of news and I'm about to break every last one. Stay with us. The Topical is presented by Cash App, the number one finance app in the App Store. And now Cash App's investing feature allows you to buy into any stock with as little as $1, which means by the end of the year, you could turn that dollar into $1.08 if you play your cards right. Download Cash App today and get $10 when you sign up using promo code TOPICAL. Cash App. Soon you'll have more money than you know what to do with. The military-industrial complex in America is a massive operation with hundreds of billions of dollars spent every year on research, weapons, and equipment for the U.S. Armed Forces. Even with that normal level of spending, eyebrows were raised this past week when the Pentagon announced that it was awarding a $100 million contract to Oscar Mayer for a new military-grade hot dog with all the fixins. OPR military correspondent Charles Dearborn is here to discuss. Hello. So, Charles, can you shine a light on some of the details of this Pentagon hot dog program? Well, the Pentagon has claimed that this Oscar Mayer-designed dog will be the most advanced encased meat on the battlefield. It's a foot-long model, all beef, slathered in every topping you could imagine. We're talking mustard, onion, pickles, hot peppers. This baby's got the works. Obviously, the Defense Department has a long history of handing out large contracts like this, but what made them feel like this new hot dog design was necessary? Uh, well, I should note, this is just a prototype, so not all the details have been finalized. But Oscar Mayer was able to beat out several other other bidders like Hebrew National and Ballpark because its design was the most flexible. Mm. There is salt and crunch from bacon bits, a little heat from the peppers, Ooh. even some Colby Jack cheese for a nice meltiness. Now, this hot dog can handle all sorts of weather conditions, be consumed at high velocity, and satisfy a wide variety of palates. So what about the cost? Some watch groups are claiming this is a textbook example of government waste. Well, the hot dog's $100 million price tag has certainly drawn some criticism. And just this afternoon, the Pentagon responded directly to concerns from Congress over the cost of the project, mm -hmm. claiming these advanced hot dog designs are a necessity for 21st century warfare. Just last year, China tested an experimental smoked Huang Chang sausage with pickled ginger capabilities. The U.S. simply cannot afford to lose its strategic advantage in the link meat field. And if these critics want to cut funding, they are more than welcome to explain to a soldier why their hot dog does not have basic sauerkraut. Now, $100 million may seem high, but it's pretty par for the course with Pentagon research. And remember, this is just the first experimental dog. Once it's ordered in mass for the military, the scale should drop the cost to around $10 million per hot dog. Of course, even if the Pentagon insists this spending is essential, critics have pointed out that the U.S. military spends more on hot dogs than the next 10 nations combined. That is true. And within the Pentagon itself, some officials have raised concerns about the Oscar Mayer program. Now, this hot dog has been in development for almost 10 years, and it is still not totally functional. With so many toppings, it has serious structural issues. And during combat trials last year, one actually exploded, severely scalding the user. Also, the cream cheese thread is not working with the relish at all. Thank you, Charles. We'll try and stay up to date with this program to see if this $100 million hot dog ends up being worth it. Earlier today, scientists at UCLA's medical school announced a fascinating new breakthrough in the field of genetics. A new procedure they've developed will, for the first time, allow parents to select the sexiness of their child. We're joined in the studio by OPR science reporter Jenna Resnick, who has the full story. Thanks for being here, Jenna. Thanks for having me. So let's get right into it. Tell me, how does this procedure work? Basically, the researchers are able to alter an embryo's genetic makeup while it's in utero in order to determine whether it will grow up to become a chiseled hunk or a fine-ass Mama Sita. I spoke to the lead researcher on the project, Lydia Jarrett, and this is how she explained it. You see, we're able to isolate DNA sequences that correspond with what are considered sexy traits. Whether it be a strong jawline, high cheekbones, or a dummy thick ass, we can then adjust whether or not these genes will code for a protein and in turn produce the parent's desired traits. And how specific can you get in determining whether the child will be hot, not, or everything in between? Very specific. Of course, you can make them a perfect 10 if you so desire. Or you can also make them a 7 if you want 
them to turn some heads, but not cause you too much concern. Conversely, you can make them a zero if you want them to be a completely busted uggo. Wow. And how many parents have signed up for the procedure thus far? Well, millions have applied, but only a very few were selected for the first clinical trial. I actually got the chance to speak to two of them, Bob and Linda Caruso, who were highly enthusiastic. We just want to make sure our child doesn't have to suffer like we've suffered. See, I'm a balding, dumpy creep with a muffin top and hair in all the wrong places. And I have a horse face. We want our child to be free of our ancestral curse of unsightly features. We want to make sure he has rock-hard abs and is an absolute certified snack with the biceps to match. <laughs> Huh, now I know that a lot of these types of issues often stir controversy and accusations that scientists are trying to play God by modifying an embryo to have luscious locks of hair or silky smooth skin. Has there been anyone speaking out against the procedure? There were actually some protesters outside during my visit. I spoke to one of them about his complaints. His name is Roy Talbert, and he was holding a Keep Children Ugly sign as he believes that trying to engineer your child to be a dime piece with jumbo honkers or a pussy getting stud muffin is unethical. It's against God's will to inject chemicals into your newborn to try to make them look like a sex kitten. You should love your baby for who they are, whether they look like Natalie Portman or Paul Giamatti. Roy himself was ugly, though, so he might be biased. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perhaps motivated by jealousy. <laughs> I know, right? Too bad this procedure wasn't around when your parents had you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry. But sorry isn't going to cut it, Jenna. Oh, Leslie, I was I don't care what you were trying to do. I have a facial deformity. It's called hemifacial microsomia. It's a real diagnosable medical condition. It isn't some fucking joke. I'm sorry. I only meant Do you that... know what it's like for me to wake up every day and dread having to look in the mirror? Do you know what it's like to live when your own body is a prison? No, I don't. No! You don't know what it's like. You will never know what it's like, so don't even try. God damn it! God fucking damn it! I'm sorry. This has been an OPR science report. Just play the fucking ad. The Topical is brought to you by Simply Safe. With home security, there's two ways you can go about protecting your home. There's the traditional way, where you wait weeks for a technician to do a messy installation that costs a small fortune. Or there's the other way, Simply Safe. You get comprehensive protection for your entire home. Except from ghosts, of course. Ghosts can go through walls and are virtually undetectable unless they start moving objects around in your house. And even if Simply Safe did guard against ghosts, the police would probably be too spooked out to do anything about them anyway. So you're going to want to find a different solution for that. But for those plagued by human intruders, go to simplysafe.com slash topical today. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure to go to simplysafe.com slash topical. That's simplysafe.com slash topical. <clears throat> all right. I'm sorry you all had to hear me that way. Let's just try and get through the rest of this together professionally. Here's what else you need to know today. Paleontologists announced an interesting finding this week. It turns out they had been attributing the wrong bones to the Tyrannosaurus rex for years, and the dinosaur is now believed to have had upper arms proportional to the rest of its body. No word yet on where all those other tiny arm bones came from. A new program in California is training firefighters to verbally de-escalate flames before resorting to putting them out. Officials are hoping these attempts will teach firefighters to reach a peaceful outcome before immediately reaching for their hose. And a new study out of the Mayo Clinic clinic has found that more than 99% of coma patients stay sedated because their family simply doesn't plead with them enough to wake up. The study also concluded that not only could you have done more, you should have done more because you can always do more. That's the topical for today. I'm Leslie Price, and I'm going to go buy myself some new clothes to make myself feel better. If you enjoyed today's episode, like and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast. And don't worry, Jenna won't be back for a while. <laughs>